Hi, my name is Sean Richardson, and tonight we're going to be talking about something that's all around us. We don't see it, but uh, it's there. It travels at the speed of light, and it even uh, has the power to go through these uh, the building's walls. What I'm going to talk about is uh, wireless communication. So um, it's, uh, or actually more specifically, the wireless communication here at Cal Poly Pomona. So the, there's two services that are offered here. There's uh, CPP and the guest wireless. Um, the, uh, the, actually, and my claim tonight is that um, when you're on campus using your wireless internet for your laptop or your iPod or iPhone or whatever, that uh, you're taking an unnecessary risk by using guest wireless. And that, uh, um, or any other free public Wi-Fi for that matter. So um, first I'm going to talk about how guest wireless is different from CPP wireless. Uh, second, I'm going to talk about what might happen whenever you're using guest wireless. And third, uh, what risks you're taking when you use guest wireless. And lastly, I'll mention an alternative to uh, what you should use or what you, why you shouldn't use guest wireless. So the problem is simple. When you're using Wi-Fi, you're sending data through the air and it's picked up by a radio. Uh, the radio is attached to an uh, antenna on a router. But anybody else with an antenna can intercept that signal. So it's not a big deal if the data is scrambled, but guest wireless doesn't offer um, any, uh, does not scramble or encrypt the data. Um, first, uh, this is a problem because anyone uh, with with an antenna, you know, can listen into your uh, to your communication. Um, the uh, guest wireless is different from CPP and is not authenticated and that uh, anyone can spoof the guest wireless and uh, you can connect to it and you're, th you're thinking you're connecting to the um, authentic guest wireless but you're not, you're, uh, you could be connecting to someone who's got uh, a spoofed uh, access point. And what this um, risk provides is that it's, uh, uh, someone could uh, be manually meddling you. Even if you're using, say, uh, HTTPS, which is uh, supposed to be a secure uh, protocol, you could be, they could um, uh, decrypt that traffic uh, by man in the middle of you and, uh, uh, you know, decrypt any uh, signals that you're sending, such as, uh, you know, uh, logging into Facebook or Twitter or your Google Mail or whatever. Um, this, they've also, there's, there's many other attack vectors that they could exploit if they're man in the middle of you. They could post lewd images or, you know, uh, put uh, any information into the data stream that they want. Um, guest wireless also offers no encryption. Uh, I mentioned that earlier, but it just means that um, it's, it's no better than if you just, uh, like say, take the, uh, say you're writing a letter, for instance. Um, whenever you write your letter, you put it in an envelope. <coughs> that envelope usually covers what you're writing, and nobody can tell what's, um, being sent until you uh, until the receiver opens it. But um, guest wireless is kind of like writing it on a postcard. Everything can be read; at, it's out in the open, but it's being sent to the, the original uh, or the intended recipient. So um, don't you know? Don't use guest wireless for anything that you wouldn't write on a postcard. Um, the uh, and then there's the ubiquity of the hardware that's available to. Um, listen in to the, the encrypted or the unencrypted wireless. The problem is, is that um, anybody with a laptop or anybody with a, a, an iPhone or whatever they can listen into that um, uh, unencrypted wireless. So that that's uh, how guest wireless is different. The uh, second point is um, information leakage is a risk. So um, uh, there's obviously you know that. Uh, you don't want other people to listen into your data, but why? You know, why, why do you care? There's a, a report put out by the uh, Forbes Institute, or Forbes magazine, that says that uh, they can guess your social security number based on the information they glean from your social networking website. So uh, not only can you, know, can you ruin, uh, uh, ruin your I don't know, your friendships, or you can you know, uh, ruin your chances, your prospects of getting a job, but they can also get you know, other credit information or other, you know, and, and how many of you, you know, or 
I, I know at least half of you use multiple, uh, <coughs> the same password for multiple websites. So if they pull that um, password from, say, your Facebook account, then they can try it against your bank account and see if that works. And, and I'm sure the for, for half of you it will probably work. And also they can use it for social engineering. If they know your mother's name or your, your brother, little brother's name, they could probably guess some of your passwords, right? Um, so th that's uh, the risks that you could um, that you could, uh, could encounter by using guest wireless. And uh, I, I just want to quickly mention uh, what you can do to uh, alleviate, or maybe uh, you know why you shouldn't use it, and how you can avoid uh, using or using unencrypted wireless. Because uh, we're, I know we're all students here. So, uh, or we all have at least accounts here. So you can you, uh, use the other wireless services mentioned, CPP. Um, you just have to log in, and uh, or you could use your um, your phone through 3G or 4G <coughs> or whatever you you uh, have set up, and um, that will give you at least some uh, some form of encryption. Um, there's there's many other ones, and if you'd like to learn about them, I didn't, invite you to come visit us at SWIFT. It's a club here on campus. Um, we talk about telecommunications and, and that sort of thing. Um, but in closing, you, you should not use uh, guest wireless. It's an unnecessary risk. And uh, there's uh, many, many ways to avoid it. And there's many reasons uh, that, that you shouldn't. So thank you. All right, I, I like the suspense in the intro, and you give us good background on the subject. Your claim is, I think, a little bit uncertain. At the end, it ends up being a policy claim, so you want to get back to the notion that there is a substantial risk from using guest wireless. That's basically what the claim is. Uh, your ideas were laid out pretty well at the beginning of the speech, but in the body of the speech, I didn't think you did as clear a job signposting those points. Uh, you, you did define your terms, and you usually explain concepts as you were talking about them. Uh, everything, though, all of your evidence seems to be hypothetical examples. This could happen. This is a possibility. Somebody could do this. Here's a situation that might come up. And we need some data to suggest that this is happening, how widespread it is, uh, how typical, um, how much we should worry about it, because uh, planning for the idea of a hypothetical is not something that's going to be a strong motivator for most people. And that's the biggest problem in your speech. Um, the other thing, of course, is that it raises a lot of questions. Everybody's going to be wanting to ask about this, and so some of it's about, you know, it becomes a little bit more informative than it becomes argumentative as a consequence. I thought you did a nice job talking to the audience at the beginning. You look at us pretty clearly and effectively, and you seem to come across like you're knowing, like you know what you're talking about. Uh, like I said, I think primarily, though, you need better evidence to prove the points that you are presenting. All right, thank you.